Okay, welcome back to the shop. We have the bottom is all done. That part is done. All holes are drilled and tapped, short of the linear rails. Um, this plate is for the Z carriage. The only thing it has left to get put into it are the holes to mount the spindle, which I'm going to do a bit later. I'm not dealing with that right now. Um, I just want to get a structure together first. So this part has no other tap holes besides those. So we're going to come over to this one and I'm just going to hold it. I'm not sure this will come out far enough to hold it there or there for that matter. Okay, so we are going to head head down to this hole set and uh, I'm just going to clamp it here because I'm only going to do these four. So I'm just going to clamp it on the area that I will be wrenching on here. Although I am going to get I'm going to get schmoo all over these. So let's bring the plastic over and find our dog. And then find this dog. Okay, like so, like so. And grabbed it. There, now I've got plastic in the way. That'll save my messy bench from being even messier. And uh, this time I'm going to try a little harder to get a better starting hole. Start a little straighter here. That's better. There we go. That's much better. Yeah. There we go. And she's threading a lot easier. I'm not fighting the, ow, the hole here. I am going to be fighting the wood underneath, though, because I'm going to try to go through, and it's going to want to hit the bench. So I'm going to call that one started, and then I'll move it around or something and find somewhere else I can hold on to it. So there we go. Well, I managed to get eight or six holes tapped fully by hand before I got bored and emboldened by my alum chemical experiment success. So uh, let's see if I can't screw up some holes. How about that? That one's good. use the push pull on the last there's six more holes to go yeah I think the nice thing about the push pull is that it's geared way down too, so it puts a little better torque action. All right, we'll pull that thing out. I haven't used that thing in years. Where you guys thought I was kidding? No, oh, the push-pull tapper. I've shown this before, but it's pretty cool. Um, it, it's designed, um, I've used it in the drill press before. It's also, I can use it here. Um, as long as your work's clamped down, it works fine. It's this little guy that you chuck in your drill and it has a gear system in it so that depending on which half of this so it's a split little guy here right okay depending on which half of this you hold so if you hold this one and you're pushing the uh the upper one spins and you'll see which direction the maybe it's got to be pulled i forget which way you got to do it but one of these and then if you hold the other one the other one turns and it spins it the opposite direction. There's a there's a pull mechanism here too, so it's going to be easier to see when it's in use. But 
pretty nifty device. It's also got a pretty heavy gear reduction too so that the torque gets transferred in a way that's a little better. And the other nice thing, it's kinder to the taps. It holds them a lot better. Um, so I'm going to get this worked out. And I have to remember how I hold these. Okay, just like that. Um, and so I'm going to get this together and set up and then we'll start playing with it. Alright, so I got her on the drill. It's kind of an obnoxiously big contraption, but put it in low speed and we'll start a new hole with her. I find it actually kind of helpful in getting straight because the line is longer. And uh, we can spin, see, I can drill without holding on to anything, the tap just stays put. But if I put my hand and grab this, I can start it. And if I let go, it just stops. So we just go for it until I can't really grip it anymore. And then I can pull back and this side spins. And I can really pull it back out. We do a little bit of back and forth. There we go. And then I can evacuate the chips. So I kind of like this from a... Once you get the rhythm down, it works really, really well. It takes a little bit to get used to that rhythm, but once you've got it, you can kind of re really go through this pretty quickly. So I'm back spinning it to get till I don't cross thread. And then I just grab it again. And I feel her. Yeah, that's it right there. And we can back out and go back in. There we go. I think our chip's got a little jammed up in there, but no big deal. We just pull her out. Clear the chip. And we can just keep going. This helps, this is also kind of helpful on the drill press because I can pull back with the quill, but clamping things down and stuff is kind of a pain. So this is one of the few times I've done this by hand with a hand drill, but you know, it, uh, there, that's it. You just get on in there. As soon as it hits, it's obvious too. It's like, whoop. There it is. There we go. See if I can get through this time. Yep, we can. And then I can switch to high gear. And yank her on out. Easy peasy. You know, so it's probably not all that much faster than hand tapping. You kind of develop the touch, but it's kind of fun. You know, so I'm just going to keep on going with this and uh, get these last three holes done. Well, since vertical is working so much easier, I figured I'd do the table ones too, even if I decide not to use them. It's not a lot of effort, so just, uh, just go after these guys here. All right, so the next holes are 1032s that go here. And I tried with the push-pull, but it's, this is a delicate, delicate tap, and I don't want to, I don't want to screw it up. So I'm going to try, um, I was using, I tried it by hand, and I was using the mineral spirits, but it was a bit sticky. But I've got some, uh, <laughs> Stan Zinkowski could help with this. I got a little bit of the old, uh, I got some anchor lube sample. And so we're going to try it, because it's reportedly good in tapping aluminum. So we'll see how well that does. 
um, by hand here just to see if I can't make this guy uh, tap nice. So I started it a little bit with the power tapping and it just made me nervous. So hold on, let me get this worked out here. There we go. So we'll see. Let's see if we can't get some good tapping here. So there we go. Well, that feels better than the it feels better than the mineral spirits did. So that's a good sign. It's not quite through yet. Chip. Yeah, this actually might be suitable here. It's poking out the other end. And since these aren't, since these are through holes, it's a little easier to work with the chips. Yeah, this is doing fine. All right. So maybe for this small one, the, the anchor lube might be the, the Cockford Ollie. Yeah, that's working out well. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get these guys tapped for 1032. And just to prove it a second, I'm going to go get one of those 5 millimeter screws and make sure that I just didn't thread this wrong and make a, make a mess for myself. But I'm pretty sure, pretty sure it's okay. There we go. Yeah. Let me clean this up real quick. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say anchor lube is the best thing in the world, but it uh, it was better than mineral spirits was in a 1032 tap. Yeah, okay. So I'll bring you back as I tap the rest of these here. All right, those are tapped. I'm gonna take us back to the bench and figure out what I need to do next. All right, so now that um, all but I think eight holes are tapped, I've gotta tap the uh, aluminum extrusions for these 5 16 The trick there though is I need to know how long to cut them. And you could just as easily um, make them the same width as the base and it should, in theory, go square. And that's probably true. But there's a teeny tiny part of me that needs to see this going together here. OK, so I'm going to try to assemble this a little bit so I can play around. And I also just want to do this to get a sense of the parts and their dimensions and whatnot. So. We're just doing this because I want to. And I'm kind of get a sense of how square things are, I guess, too. Just let that be kind of loose. And here, let's, let's give you guys a better view here. There we go, yeah. The holes line up. That's a good sign because they. I can already tell it's going to be a heavy bugger. All right, so now bring this up. We'll have 80-20 going here and here and here and here. And I'm just real curious. I'm going to take a really rough measurement here real quick. So this inside dimension, here, let me, let me move. This inside dimension is pretty much right on 13 inches up here. Whew. That is out a ways. That is 13 and 3 eighths, so we definitely need to come in with it. Um, that's okay, though. I'm okay with that being needing to be tweaked. Um, doesn't bother me really all that much. How's it doing here? Yeah, so it's pretty linear. So if I cut them at 13 inches, 
we should be good. I could have just measured, but I kind of wanted to put it together a little bit, you know, just to have a glimpse of her, see how she's going to do. And I think she will do just fine. I am a little curious about the lead screw mount. Let's put the lead screw in and see if um, 13 is right. Because if I have to adjust it, I don't mind adjusting it now. We shall see. So, on this side, we'll go with this one. So this here, this here. there and then this will go in here yeah we're just not going to be able to we're just not going to be able to finagle that that way and this definitely needs to come in anyway because this actually should be sticking a bit out okay so that just means I'm going to have to take off a side to get most of this on. And that's okay. And that's okay. Or we do it with the lead screw assembled. And let's pull this out. Let's pull this off. Oh, wrong wrench. Helps if you grab the right wrench. So if we take you, we uh, put you in through here, like a so, and we put you on here, assemble this thing a little bit there, and take the nut. This should be very, very close to this dimension down here. It may be a little slim. We'll see. It does need a shim. Okay, we are going to need a little bit of a shim. This is slightly under... Actually, it might be fine. Then I can preload the screw. Okay. So this will go here. Yeah, we can do this. Okay. So this can come here. Yeah, that'll hold there while I adjust this set of screws, although it does mean I can't, uh, I can't very nicely use my wrench anymore. I actually have to uh, do them half turn at a time. That's annoying, but totally survivable. Yeah, we're gonna, I'm gonna mock this up as far as I can and just double check fits of everything, because one, it's kind of fun to do in the first place, but also it helps me understand what else I need to adjust. It helps me get a better feel for how to assemble everything, any other parts I need. I'm pretty sure I won't have to worry too terribly much about the length on the screw there. I think it'll be okay. What I believe to be the case is that this doesn't actually have to bottom out on the bearing. Although I guess it doesn't hurt if it does. Maybe it do. Maybe I'll, uh, maybe I can, uh, yeah, that'll go there. So this gets a spring clip, so I'll be, I'll be preloading onto that anyway. So that gets a spring clip. I should actually put that get that get one of those and put it on there so that it holds it all right we got our pliers here and our clip but it's a bit of a trick to get down inside there I'm afraid are we in all the way I think so I think the groove is available all right well let's find out okay guard your eyes kids because the spring clamp here Yeah, getting it in there is going to be tricky. Let's try this way. No, getting into the getting into the deep depths of that hole, I should put this clip on 
first because it's actually kind of a pain to get on there through that half inch thick cavity it's just not the it's just not liking me Clip. Now we should be able to get our clip down in there. Yunk. There we go. She's in. Okay, is there any other bits that need to be on this? No, I don't think so. Okay. We can slide this guy in here. That works beautifully. Okay. And then we can bolt. That's good. Just get a bolt in there is fine for the moment. To take up the weight. Yeah, this is gonna be fine. So get this and then if I pull this to 13, I think we'll be okay. I'm gonna at some point it's going to want to be tighter than 13 because the 80-20 will actually hold it apart at 13. But yeah, so far so good. So far so good. Take this and just get it kind of cinched. Gently until I hit 13, which is perfectly fine because that's what the 8020 will be bringing us to. Okay, right about that is about 13. Yeah, that's pretty good. There. Okay, so there is a little bit of wobble. There's like Maybe a 32nd of an inch there, but that's okay. I'm going to, oh, that's going to be tricky to do, isn't it? Interesting. Okay, so mounting this is going to preload the screw naturally because that nut that I just put on the end here, let me grab another screw. This nut here that holds it to the block, I can't get really I really can't get into, get at it from this side. I'm gonna have a heck of a time just getting my coupler on this side. Let's see. Yeah, that's gonna go here. Okay, yeah, we can get the coupler on. And I can tighten it, that's good. Okay, so that'll be all right. I'm just working through my processes here. Uh, this now goes on with the 40 millimeter ones. Because I need the added lumps. And these hold well. No noticeable. I got no no detectable backlash anywhere that I can feel. So that's nice. That's going to be great. 
I don't know if I can back turn the screw. Oh yeah, I probably could. It wouldn't take a lot of weight. No, I can back turn the screw. I have a feeling that I am going to need a... Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little scared, but I have a feeling I'm going to need a, oh yeah, I'm probably going to need a brake on the Z-axis. But hopefully I can work something out. Yeah, hopefully I can work something out. Um, so that's there. That's cool. Uh, I guess we are ready to cut our extrusions. And then it'll become finesse at that point after that. Cool. That's actually really good. I'm glad that though this span was the one I was most concerned about getting right. But let's do another screw. Let's make sure these ones are working. Okay, that'll be good. The top will go on there. Or the, sorry, the table will go on there. Good, I'm glad, I, I'm glad I got that part sussed. Which also means we can put this to the side. We can do this plate as well here. So it's going this way. And let's get the other screw. What the hell, why not? Why the hell not? This one's easy. It'll work exactly the same way as that one did. Now we can take the whole mess, flip that nut over so it's on the right side. We can slide. Okay, so this mess goes on after the bearing trucks. No two ways about that. So how did I manage this the last time? I feel like, yeah, that one got it done somehow. This one's gonna get it done the same. And it's off by a half a hole right now, but it's this way for some reason, but I think it's because Something's not fully driven home yet. Oh, we moved the bearing. That's what we did. Yeah, that's what happened. I moved that bearing. All right. So we're not going to really preload the screw because it's based on that press. Fine with me, actually. I just moved the bearing is all. Cool. I can deal with that. I can deal with that just fine. Okay, so we're going to, I guess, since the trucks need to go onto this piece at least... We can do that. Oh, these go turned. They go the other. Yeah, whoops. These are turned the wrong direction. Hold on. cinch you down just barely cinch doesn't matter too much um, I don't have the 8020 cut yet so we're not quite ready for that mount anyhow there 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 Bonk. we may need shims here somewhere probably not Yes, and stuff rolls nicely. Cool. So we can slide you out now. We know that'll work. 
which is not really a doubt, but I'm just getting, I'm having a little bit of geeking out on how well the holes have aligned, which is really nice. Now we can throw this guy on here. And we can throw this guy through that, and this guy through that. And it's the other, not this one, the other wrench, which is now apparently uh, hiding. It's not you. It's the other one. Where'd you go? Oh, here. Bink. Slip that into there. Slip this one onto here. I can leave a little bit of wiggle. We can run you this way now. And we can find our alignment there. Any of you different links? I hope not. Hope I've got enough of these buggers. Yeah, these are working. These are working. Going in the holes? You are. How about you? Not yet. There you go. That one makes it. You make it then too. Cool. So far so good on hole alignment. Yeah, that one's a little snug. But that's okay. We're we're in happiness land here. Yeah. Okay, so now that and that. Okay. Somewhere on this as well, this is the part that's insane, I think, is rails go there. We're going to have a pair of rails on here somewhere, probably down here somewhere, like this. Whew. Yeah, that's a busy, that's a busy panel. Faux show. And that'll carry the Z carriage, which is uh, this guy right here. Uh-oh, her holes are way off. Okay, so we've noticed a problem. Those are way the hell off. Okay, the nuts hole pattern is definitely wrong. Like, by a mile. Like, a whole lot. Hmm. That's a bit irritating, but it's on all three parts, for sure. Interesting. I guess I'm going to have to make new counterbores for those. Damn it. Yeah, that's way off. Not even close. So, I just took that one and put it on there too, didn't I? Damn. Okay, well. <sighs> okay, this hole pattern here on this, well, here. This, the nut here, this thing, the hole pattern is wrong. I got it wrong on all three of them. It's the one area I relied on specs for, but I'm pretty sure... Uh, I probably picked the wrong specs, I guess. Damn. It means I need to make new holes and new counter bores on all these. Um, the nice thing, one of the good parts of this, though, is that none of those screw hole, or none of those lead nut locations need to be smack dab in the middle. There's room. Let me make sure I get a truck on here. There's room. Yeah, so I can go pretty much anywhere on this. I can move up or down. That'll be fine because there's more travel than I'm using anyways. Um, kind of annoyed that I have to do that, but it's just sort of the nature of it. It's the way it is, I guess. Not much I can do about it. Um, the trick is whether I've got... Yeah, I should be able to hold them all in the mill. Yeah. Okay, so see, this is why we're doing this. Um, damn, that's really annoying though. Really wish I had gotten that right the first time. Just means I'm going to have a bunch of spare extra holes where they don't belong, but that's all right. Um, anywho, all right. I'll, bore, I'll spare you this boring uh, task of 
removing all these things from each other. Um, and then I'll bring you back when I'm ready to probably, let's mill those screws. Actually, we'll do the 80-20 first. Yeah, we'll do the 80-20 first. So the idea is do as much as you can do before you have to make modifications. <laughs> 